Hi, I'm Mike from 1A Auto. We've been selling auto parts for over 30 years. Hey everyone, Sue here at 1A Auto, and today I'm going to be doing parking brake shoes on our 2011 Ford F-150. If you need any parts for your car, click on the link below and head on over to 1AAuto.com. First thing we're going to do is remove the tire. I've got the weight of the vehicle slightly on the tire to give pressure so I can loosen the lug nuts. It's a 21 millimeter socket. Now I'm going to raise and support the vehicle with a two post lift. You can use a jack and jack stands at home. Before I take this lug nut completely off, I want to see if I can get this tire off or if it's frozen on the hub. Nah, it's pretty on there, so I'm going to, it's a good thing I checked, so now I'm going to leave that on and I'm going to get a four pound hammer and I'm going to hit it from the back and see if I can break this free. So once you've uh, used a hammer and hit it on the tire part, not the rim, just kept working it, we got it free. So now I can take the tire off. First thing I'm going to do before I remove the caliper is I'm going to take the boot cover off and spray this bleeder screw down so that hopefully it doesn't break when we break it open to push the piston back. Just going to spray that down and hope it soaks in there. Let it sit for a little bit. So the bleeder screw is a 10 millimeter wrench or socket, and I'm going to see if I spray it and let it sit long enough. Hopefully it doesn't break off. Oh, we got it open. All right. We open the bleeder screw for a reason to make sure it breaks open because we're going to end up opening it and pushing the piston back to bottom out the piston because you never want to push the piston back with a bleeder screw closed on an ABS system. It can cause damage in the ABS module. So now we're going to dismount the caliper and the caliper slider bolts are 10 millimeter. On Fords, it's not uncommon to see this top rubber balancer in, in a sense. It's like a shutter balancer. It stops the caliper from shuttering during hard braking. Um, it's just something Ford's done for years. So unfortunately, you're gonna have to use a wrench on the top and you can use a socket or a boxed end wrench on the bottom. So 10 millimeter, I'm gonna break that free. We'll take the bottom bolt all the way out. You can't take the top bolt completely out because of the leaf spring and the rubber bushing that's on the end, but you can take that out once you've pried the caliper up and off the bracket, which we'll do. Let's get that bolt out of the way. And you're gonna pry the caliper from the top and pry it out. There's a pressure spring on the pad on the side you can push it down if you need to. And the thing about these pads on this Ford is that there's a clip on the in inner pad into the caliper piston. So you can't just pry. Most of the time the pad is stuck in the bracket after some age of being in there for a while. So I'll just take a little hammer and my pry bar and break that lip free, that little claw. That way now we can easily pry the caliper up. There we go. All right, now you can see the pad and the situation that was just forming. So now I can take this out. So see how the top pads have this slot on the bottom and the bottoms have the groove. So it sits down in like a fork and then you have to put the top down. So the bottom goes in first and the top slides on. That's how we're gonna install it also. So now I could take the a hammer and take the pads off the inner one will come right out. Those are the fingers that I was talking about that sit inside the piston. I'm going to need to take a hammer to the outer one to break these butterfly fingers off.
Then we can take the inner pad out. And then we have our caliper. I'm gonna set this aside for now. And we'll take the rotor off. I'm gonna spray the rotor where it meets the hub. Hopefully I can break that rust line free with some penetrating spray. I'm gonna take a hammer and hit the hub, the hat part of the rotor. There we go. Now I can work it back and forth. Sometimes you have to go back there and break the parking brake shoes. You're going to have to unadjust them. But this, I think, I don't, I'm not going to need to. There's your rotor, and this is where the parking brake shoes ride on the inside of that hat. Pretty rusted. These are the parking brake shoes. So now I've got my caliper piston tool. This uh, expands, pushes the piston inside the, the caliper. And I'm just gonna snug it. I'm not gonna push back on it. And I'm gonna get my 10 millimeter wrench and I can open that bleeder screw and put it down in my, aim it towards my catch bucket. There we go. And now I can ratchet this piston back safely without putting any fluid in reverse flow where I can cause internal damage of my ABS module. I know in the old days we used to do brakes you could just push these the piston back with no problem but you didn't you didn't have an ABS module in line. Now I'm gonna snug that up so it doesn't make a mess. Take my ratchet off. And there's your piston sitting all the way back. Now we'll look for any damage on that dust seal, inner seal, see no fluid coming out. Everything looks good. Sliders are not frozen. So we'll take care of those with some fresh caliper grease inside there. We can set this aside now. When we did a rear brake job on this truck, the driver's side, Bleeder screw was frozen in the vehicle and it snapped off flush with the caliper. This does happen, it's not uncommon. When this happens, we replace calipers, and I do personally, because this is such a lightweight and the materials are so thin, you try to easy that out or drill it out, you're gonna get some of that drill material internally inside that piston. It's not worth the time and the effort. Just go buy yourself a new caliper, start from scratch, and like usual, and always, I like to do things in a pair. So if I have a brand new caliper on this side, I'm gonna get one for the other side. It's equal pressure for hydraulic for equal braking. You don't know if this, on the other side, if this piston is just starting to wear down or the seal is weak, you're not gonna have an accurate hydraulic pressure on braking. So I strongly recommend two calipers, even if only one needs to be replaced. Here are your e-brake shoes, and they're mounted to the backing plate on the rear differential. Uh, with the axle in, the axle hub only comes out to about here, so it doesn't make it difficult, it's not harder, and this isn't you know, easier. But the axles are out, we're doing axle seals and bearings, and before I put the new bearings and seals in, I want to show you how to change your rear e-brake shoes. So well, now we have a better visual for you with the camera, and it's start with, I like to take the shoe clips off. Now these are just a push down, and slide it to that where that little uh, lip is. So the smaller lips there and the higher spots there. You can use a pair of needle nose pliers if you want. As you just gotta squeeze it, somehow get the pliers in there to squeeze and manipulate that thing like that. There's the pin, the pin goes through the backing plate and there's a slotted hole in the back. Oh, that pin's bent anyway, see that? You see the bend to it? That'll call it, cause improper e-brake wear, shoe wear. Do the same on this side. You 
see the back where it comes through. Right there. And we have a spring in the back. You can see it here. And then a spring in the bottom. So the spring in the bottom I'm going to do first. It's below the adjuster. The adjuster on this could be frozen. I haven't even checked it yet. No, it's not. Doesn't matter. I'm replacing it anyways. So for the price of the hardware, it comes with the adjuster comes with the new hardware that 1A Auto sells you. So I'm going to replace it all. Springs and adjuster. So force that spring out of there. Now I can take the shoes apart. There's the adjuster. Now up here I'm going to now that the, the bottom can crisscross, I can cross it. Take like a small pry bar, get it up in there to get outside of this ear. That's what I'm pry the shoe, shoe past that. And I can get the kind of fast, but it all fell apart. So now there's your two shoes with the adjuster still attached. They freeze on that. That's frozen on there. So that's not going to have the free motion it needs to when you are going down the, and if you use your e-brake, it's supposed to pivot. And that's stuck on there. I'm going to show you how when we reassemble, how we'll keep that down to a minimal. Now with the e-brake shoes missing and taken away, you can see the actual e-brake pivot. These are two pieces of metal that are supposed to knock, spin back and forth. Um, you'll see once we clean it up, but this is a major problem with e-brake shoes, parking brake shoes, not holding or getting stuck in the on position because you use your e-brake on that twice a year time. Uh, this needs to be addressed and fixed properly. So we're going to take this pivot piece out and what it does, it goes through a boot in the backing plate, comes out the other side and it has a hook piece to it and it hooks into the e-brake cable. That's the cable right there. So I'm just going to grab it and pivot it out like that. And pull it hopefully without damaging the boot. We don't want this boot to be torn or have any holes in it because that's how water will get in here and damage this. Just put the boot in the back in the correct position. There we go. So here we go. This is the pivot. This is a pin that it's supposed to pivot on, and that's the stopping pin. And this thing is frozen. So I'm just going to mount it in the vise, the shot vise. Get some rust penetrant and spray this down. Grab a hammer, I'm just going to tap it back and forth. Should come apart. This is a two piece system. Comes apart, I can put it on the wire wheel and clean it up, then put it back together. There it goes. Now, <laughs> if this comes apart like it's supposed to for you. Um, take a picture of it before you take it apart. I'd hate to see wasted time spent if you put it back together and you're like, I think it went this way. And you've got to figure it out, but that's why we have those cameras in our pockets, right? Now that I've wired wheeled all the rust off the pivot point. I'm going to load it up with some NECs and hopefully stop that from the future of happening again. Clean that. So now I'm going to just wheel back on. I'm just going to work that in there to make sure it feels good. There's no glitches. Feels perfect. And we're going to slide that back through. And on the other side, I'm going to hook it into the e-brake cable. Throw things. There we go. And now with that in the cable, you can see that this is going to pivot perfectly once its shoes are attached and that cable gets pulled on. It'll pivot that back and forth. Here we have the e-brake shoes and our hardware kit. And all your hardware kits will come with, usually come with a white lithium grease or something of the nature, the caliper grease. And I'm going to use this for what I'm going to show you for. I'm going to take our new adjuster, back it off. I'm going to 
coat the uh, threads. And then now that I've coated the threads, I'm going to put the adjuster on, thread this all the way down. Then we'll put the sleeve on. So I want to bring it down so it's at its minimal, the lowest point it can be. And I'm going to just load this back up with some grease. Save some for the other side. It's only one packet for two-sided hardware. And then I'm going to install the sleeve, spinning it, trying to work that grease, white lithium grease down inside there. So that'll always be in there and keep those threads nice and lubricated. So now we're ready to hang the shoes, then install our adjuster. I just took a wire brush real quick and, and just scraped away at the rust spots here where the shoes, the e-brake shoes, it's the highest hitting point. So I'm going to use some caliper grease and just give it a light coating where the shoes actually hit the backing plate. Six spots. So I'm going to take the new pin, see how clean it is, it's not rusted and straight. I'm going to push it through the back here. So now that I put the pin in, the backing plate slot, I'm going to line my clip up with the e-brake shoe. I'm going to pick a pair of angled adjustable pliers and I'm going to squeeze that and hold that. Hopefully I can bring that up. See if I can keep that squeezed and turn this at the same time. Hold on. There we go. Now I'm going to put the spring that goes between the front and the back shoe in the back. See how I've got this spring, it's got a high end to it. The bar is up on the top or the bar is on the bottom. Put it on the bottom to clear that mechanism and hook it through. Now I'm going to take this shoe, flip it around. I'm going to put it through that slot. And this is where a lot of strength and energy comes. So line it up like that and use the leverage of the vehicle. Hopefully, there we go. Almost like I knew what I was doing. Okay, now with that like that, I'm going to take my adjuster that I've already prepared and I'm going to take some caliper grease and I'm going to coat in here both sides so hopefully that pivot doesn't freeze in there like it did on the old one and I'm going to put the adjuster in line that up line that up so it falls right in place perfect now I can put my spring on, put the pin through on this side, get my clip, take my offset pliers, push the clip up, make sure the clips ride on the shoes and you see the indent, you want those pins to be parallel with that. Now we just have the bottom spring to put on. Believe it or not, that's probably the easiest. So I'm going to clip it on that side, get a pair of cutters, and I just hold it firmly, squeeze, and line it up. Here we have our e-brake shoes. Last thing is they give you a new adjuster boot. And that's what this circle is. It's a rubber boot that goes to the backing plate. And you just push it right out. And then you can see on the back side. So to adjust these, once you put your rotor on and your caliper and pads are on, I like to, then I'll put two lug nuts on, flatten that rotor, make sure it's nice and tight. And then you can bring a flat nose screwdriver back here and adjust 
this as you spin the wheel, which I'll show you how to do once we get to that point. So this will go in the back side. It's got a groove on it, see? That sits inside that tin. We'll just push it all the way around. And that keeps the water out from getting inside. Before I put the new rotor on, I'm gonna clean the hub surface just where I think I see rust spots. Let's give it a little quick spray down. Before I install the rotor, I'm gonna take off the caliper slider tins and clean them up. Now I got new hardware, I got these new tins, so I don't need to clean those up. I just need to take them off and clean the surface underneath. So I'm going to take a wire brush, clean up any rust. You can see how high it, it's, it kind of swelled underneath, it caused a little improper wear. Top and bottom. You can use sandpaper, sanding block. If you've got a air system, you can use your little whizzer wheel. I'm gonna clean it. Before I put the rotor on, I'm gonna put a little anti-seize right on where the hub meets the hat, where water will get in there and cause a rust lip. We don't want that. Before I put it on the correct way, I'm going to partially put it on like that. I'm going to take my cleaner and I'm going to clean the shipping oils off inside the hat and on the rotor surface. Now it's in the clear, we're just going to install the rotor. Now I'm going to clean the outside surface. I'm going to install a lug nut or two to give this a nice flat surface before I install the caliper. By doing this, I'm just flattening the rotor out, making sure that it's a secured against the actual hub and seated. So I can also adjust my e-brakes shoes once I get that to that point. So here we have our new caliper bracket hardware. I'm going to put some caliper grease on the surface where it mates so that way hopefully it will stop any rust buildup. How this is installed is it's kind of got little pinch pinch bolts on it. So I'm going to take a hammer and tap it down. Kind of go back and forth until it's 100% down. So these are the pinch bolts that I'm talking about. They're on both sides. And the pressure clips. Do the same to the top. So here we have our new caliper. The um, inner pad has to go in first. It's got those three spring fingers. And they fit right inside the piston cup like that. And just a firm push. And then the outer pad is going to go on. These all both go on before you put the caliper on. And you've got the two guides right there and that spring clip. So you're just going to push down on it. And there you go. I'm going to push the sliders out as far as I can. Go to line this up. Remember, we've got the bottom one that goes in first. So once you have the caliper in the bottom groove, you're gonna, don't forget to put the caliper slider or pin in. Just put that in prior. So much fun. Okay, and then you're gonna make sure that pin is all the way pulled back. And you can push down the caliper right into place. 
use a little hammer or a rubber mallet just to tap it. Make sure everything looks lined up. So the caliper comes with new bolts. It did come with two of this style new bolts, but I wanted to make sure I put that balancer back on the top. Uh, Ford, I'm sure, knows better, so it's usable. It's not broken, so I'm going to reuse it. Before I tighten it down, I'm just getting it, make sure it's in, threaded in place. And I'm going to thread this one in place. I have not dismounted the old caliper yet. And that's because it's just easier to get this one all nice in place. Then I can transfer the flex hose right over and not make a mess. Or minimal mess, shall I say. So I'm just going to snug that down, make sure it's tight. Same with the bottom. So now I'm going to take the uh, shipment plug and the new copper washers that come with the caliper. I'm going to take these out because I'm going to use them right away on the bolt and install that into the flex hose. Now when it comes to taking the flex hose off the caliper, I have not loosened that. I didn't loosen that prior when it sat inside the bracket. Um, it's just an old bad habit. So I suggest if you have it in the bracket prior to and you know you're going to change the caliper, break up, break that flex hose bolt off prior because when it's floating like this you can't do it by hand. You need an air tool or electric tool. So pardon me but I'm going to use an electric 3 8 gun, 50 millimeter socket. I'm going to break that free. Make sure I got my catch pan down below. Now you'll see the banjo bolt and it's got, looks like the copper washer is not on there. Let's look, there it is on the flex hose. That cannot be reused. We've got to get it off there. Sometimes I use the old bolt and I'll just put it in just a little bit and pry it. Sometimes it knocks it off. If not, then we have to get a flathead screwdriver. Oh, there we go, so I popped it off. So it gets pressed in there. That's the whole point, it gets like compressed in there. So that's why they give you two new washers. So I have my banjo bolt, my new copper washer, put it in. So I'm gonna put the bolt through and then put the other copper washer on that side. And then thread it in. See how the, I've got the flex hose coming directly between the two bolts and that stopper on the caliper is right there. Now it's bottomed out. Now you're gonna crush those copper washers. That's the point of them. Uh, no, no, so I have just a tension on it. I'm feeling it. I know it bottomed out. I'm just, there we go. That's, the, that's where I'm gonna stop. Now I'm gonna clean that and check for any drips. Now that the brakes are back together, I'm gonna pump up the brake pedal. Once I feel like I've got a firm pedal, I can check my brake fluid, remove my cover, and I can check the line on the side. It's just a little low, so I'm going to top it off. We're using the manufacturer's DOT.3 recommendation fluid, and that is on the cover. Right down there. Snug it up. Now with the new calipers on, I've pumped the brakes up, checked my fluid. I'm going to take the cover bolt off of the leader screw. I'm going to reuse that and use a 10 millimeter wrench and I'm going to open the bleeder screw and let it gravity bleed out. If you have the tool, you can do a one person bleed, or if you have someone with you and you know how to bleed brakes, you can do that this time. It took about five, seven minutes, and I finally started getting a steady drip. Some air came out, and now it's pretty much done. Nice steady drip of clean fluid. So I'm gonna tighten this up, move to the other side, do the same thing. 
once a steady stream comes out of dripping with no air, I'm gonna close the bleeder screw up. Make sure it's snug. Put the cover back on and clean it down with parts or brake spray. So I put the cover back on the bleeder screw on this side and I'm gonna spray it down. Now that I've blown my brakes and I'm complete back there, everything is closed up and cleaned, I come up to the master and I have to take the brake cap off. See the rubber diaphragm that got sucked down from the vacuum of the pumping? I'll just put that back in and then I'm going to top my fluid off to the max line with dot three brake fluid that's recommended. Cover's nice and clean and I'm going to reinstall it, lock it down. Now I'm gonna get ready and put the tires back on. So you have the access window with a rubber boot on it to keep the water out. It's located right under the differential tube. You see the round cutout. I take a pair of pliers because it has a lip to it. And I'm gonna just hold on to it while I pull it out. You don't wanna put it inward because then you have to take the whole, you might have to take the whole rotor off. Try a small screwdriver. Just gotta make sure you put pressure on it. Make sure it doesn't fall in. So with that out, I set that aside. And the adjuster is, you can see it, it's like right here, if you look down inside. Now you're gonna take a angled sp spindle and you're gonna see which way it goes to adjust. It feels like it's gonna go upward. So I'm grabbing it and spinning it up. At the same time, I'm gonna rotate my tire because I want to feel the brake, e-brake grab. You'll, you'll end up feeling or seeing which way it goes. You'll be able to tell. The key is to spin the tire and you'll hear the brake start to, shoe start to hit the rotor. Now you're going to do the same thing to the other side. So now with both e-brakes adjusted to my liking, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go inside, apply your parking brake, push down on that pedal. If it goes all the way to the floor, then you're gonna come back, obviously release the pedal, come back and keep adjusting these until your e-brake pedal is midway or a couple clicks down. You don't want it too tight, then you don't want it too loose. So now it's safe to put the rubber protected boots back in. I like to put the cup side out so I have something to grab Every time I, you know, remove it or install it, this thing is kind of tricky. It's got the lip for the tin to plate to sit in. Don't get too brutus with it. Sorry, brutus, if you're out there. And you see the lip, how it sits in the, in the tin. See the groove of the rubber. Set it up there. Perfect. Now it's ready to torque our wheels down, 21 millimeter socket, and the torque specs on this F-150 is 150 foot-pounds per lug nut. Don't forget to do it in the star pattern. Do it to all wheels that you've removed. Thanks for watching. Visit us at 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts, fast and free shipping, and the best customer service in the industry.